Hello, I'm Yoko, and there's a Warrior Cats fan game where you have your own clan, and it has taken over my life recently. So I wanted to draw what my clan looked like after one year of playing in game. I'll have where you can get the game linked below. It is free. The game has time skips of one moon each, which have if you haven't read Warriors, that just means uh, a month. Um, I'll do my best to explain little things like that, so you can hopefully still enjoy this video even if you don't know anything about Warrior Cats. This particular video was inspired by Boomtown's video. I hope I said that name right. Um, I was already doodling events that, it, that had happened in the game before I saw that, but seeing their video made me really want to make one. And before we get into art, let's just get into my personal rules in-game for people familiar with how the game works. I have the options that unmated cats can't have kits on um, for now. I might turn it on in the future just to see who would have one set of mystery kittens for a future drama, possibly. I also have the settings that same-sex cats can have kits on. Uh, and if that happens, I'm just gonna say they either adopted or got a surrogate or, I don't know, maybe one of them is trans. I send all cats on patrols every moon unless they are currently nursing. Exceptions can be made in certain circumstances. And apprentices must go with their mentor or another warrior if they are available. When it comes to dangerous patrols, I go off of personality traits to determine if they would proceed or not. And if it's iffy, I kind of just randomize an option. Um, overall, I do things I think would fit what the cats would actually do if they were like real. Also, I named the clan Galaxy Clan, and don't ask me how cats know what galaxies are. Uh, with that said, let's just hop in. <laughs> I'm actually going to start with Star Clan cats, so you have a little context for some future things. And for people that don't know what Star Clan is, it's essentially the afterlife in Warriors, at least where the good cats go. <laughs> um, so these cats are dead. There's only two so far, so that's good. Um, Frog Dapple was our randomly generated Star Clan guide. Uh, she was a 73 moon year old she cat who was cold and very smart. And with that, we have the start of how Galaxy Clan was formed. Frog Dapple had been a clan cat before, but her old clan is very far away. Unfortunately, she got trapped in a kitten factory, which has since stopped operation and dumped some quote unquote evidence. She ended up trying to care for four kits, uh, none of which were actually hers, and to avoid any future yikes in case any of them pair up and I forget who was related to who, uh, none of these cats were related in the beginning. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, she died, uh, so she reached out to the dreams of a few loners nearby, loners being cats not in a clan, and led them to the kits and guided them in creating a clan from scratch. So yeah, that's what I came up for the lore of how these clans were made. I actually did make three other clans to give them bordering clans and gave them the same sort of backstory where they all had um, all had a she-cat and star clan that led them to some kits that were dumped from this kitten mill thing. I also made Frog Dapple a permanent queen body type and star clan, a queen being a pregnant or nursing cat and warriors. But yeah, I tried to add some personality in her. Despite her being a pretty blank state in game that everyone gets a random cat that is just this random guy, but I tried to give her some flavor text. Uh, next and last up in Star Clan is unfortunately Squirrel Paw, who had been one of those four original kits that the clan had started around. She lived for only eight moons, which meant she was still a very young apprentice who had been training to be a medicine cat. She had been a nervous kit who had grown into a calm apprentice. In-game, she died in an accident during an event when a time skip happened. And I do have a list of potential accidental deaths, but I didn't have to randomize one because in the previous moon, it said she had been collecting death berries. So I came up with the plot that her mentor had not taught her what those were yet, and she ended up wanting to bring some to her to ask what they were where she then ended up eating one and dying. I did actually draw that, and if you don't want to see it, close your eyes for the next few seconds until I say it's gone. Uh, it is now in, on screen in 3, 2, 1. There it is. A very unfortunate death, but I do actually enjoy the pick I made. I kind of want to practice more, I don't know, creepy things like this. Uh, okay, it's gone. You can look now. But yeah, it was very sad. That was our first technical death of the game. 
and it was such a young cat. I was I was very sad when it happened. But uh, at least this was for this was the only death this year. Now let's move on to our living cats. Let's start with our leader, Samstar, a 111 moon year old wise male cat who is a great teacher. He is the oldest cat in the clan, and for context, cats will become elders at 120 moons old. Though this doesn't affect the leader in the way of he isn't going to like retire if he reaches that. Um, at the start of the clan, he became leader as the others respected his wise judgments and trusted he'd lead them well while they tried to start up, which he has done his best to do, and despite not being a good fighter, he gained a big face scar when he was defending his clan against the dog. I also imagine uh, he might have lost a life since leaders are supposed to have nine, but also they're supposed to be given nine lives by dead cats, and we only had one dead cat at the time of him becoming leader. So who knows how that works. But there's no in-game system of seeing, like, lives. So, oh well, we'll just have to say it. Um, overall, the clan is still pretty small for warrior standards. But he is proud of them and is looking forward to seeing them grow. And he is also hopeful to see Kit soon. Since there hasn't been any since the original four at the start. But he hasn't pushed for it. He's not pushy or anything. Uh, he, he kind of just reminds the clan of, like, the wise grandpa that everyone just kind of (laughs) likes. And yeah, I really like him. Next up is our deputy, Whiskerheart. She is a 81 moon old cat who is adventurous and a great fighter. Deputies are in charge of organizing patrols and will become the leader after the death of the current one. Typically, they are supposed to have had an apprentice, but since there was, there wasn't any when we started... Sandstar just waited for one of the kids to grow up to give her one. Sandstar thought her fighting skill could help balance out his lack of fighting skill. That being said, she actually got her ear ripped in a fight with a rat, which started rumors of whether she was truly worthy of the deputy position. Right now, she isn't very confident due to these circulating rumors. And I swear, most of the time she goes on patrol, we get the someone is doubting Whiskerheart's ability as deputy prompt. And she usually ends up failing the hunt and not proving herself. So she's just not having a good time right now. Despite this, Samstar is still very reassuring to her and has no plans of demoting her or anything like that. Um, As of this first year, it is unclear if there's a ringleader to all these doubts. Though, I, if I do make an update in the future, uh, who knows? There might be a ringleader. Someone might be spreading these rumors. But yeah, as for now, here's poor little Whiskerheart. <laughs> um, our next cat is our medicine cat, Poppy Wish, who is a 63 moon old ca- uh, she cat who is strict and a strong and has a strong connection to Star Clan. I swear I can talk. <laughs> Which time to explain a medicine cat for anyone who's unfamiliar. Uh, I probably should have done that when I was talking about Squirrel Paw, but oh well. Um, They are the clan's healers, and they learn herbs and remedies. They also typically receive prophecies and omens from the dead cats that are in Star Clan, and they have visions and dreams regarding that. Um, Another rule in the books is they're not supposed to have mates or children or anything. And as of now, I'm following that, but we'll see in the future if anyone decides to... to, uh start romances with any of the medicine cats and if the other people in the clan will have problems with that. Um, She already had that large scar on her neck before forming the clan and no one knows where it came from. And I also imagine that her long fluffy tail always has bits of herb residue stuck to it. Poppy Wish is currently in an angry depression spiral since her apprentice Squirrel Paw died. She blames herself for not teaching her about what death berries were and has made note to tell all new cats in the clan what they are to avoid future tragedies. Her depression is one of the reasons Sansar is hoping for more kits since he thinks getting a new apprentice would be really good for her and also she does have a soft spot for young cats and kittens and stuff. So he's just trying to cheer her up. She is also upset that Star Clan had sent a warning about Squirrel Pod to someone else instead of her. But yeah, here, here's Poppy Wish. She's going through it right now. Now let's get on to our warriors. I'll be going in age order from the oldest to youngest cats. So our oldest warrior is Yellowbush, who is an 89 moon old vengeful she cat who is formerly a kitty pet, which means she was someone's pet cat. 
Uh, the story I've made is that her owners abandon her in the forest, leaving her with a vengeance against two legs. Cats speak for humans. Uh, she's actually very new to the clan and only joined like two moons ago. Sandstar immediately let her in and made sure she learned how to survive out here. She is doing her best to fit in, though there is an intensity to her that some of the younger cats are a bit nervous around her. <laughs> she did, however, make a friend in another warrior named Burdock Foot, who we'll get to later. Also, as of right now, we're inviting every loner and kitty pet we run into because we need cats. But when we have a reasonable, reasonable amount of cats, I will be rejecting most of them. But if you haven't played the game, I'll also say you have no information of who you are potentially inviting. So it will just say something like, a kitty pet is interested in joining the clan or something, and you have to see who they are when if like you convince them to join, and then you'll be like, uh-oh, I uh, guess they were bloodthirsty. <laughs> Or like something like that. You just never know what you're getting into. But yeah, here's Yellowbush. With that said, our next cat is another cat who was invited to join pretty much around the same time as Yellowbush, but not together. Um, Dust Cloud, a 66 moon old sneaky cat who was formerly a loner. He had been wandering around the territory and was invited to join. Both him and Yellowbush being outsiders, they quickly bonded and have a good friendship going. Some cats are a bit suspicious of Dust Cloud and are wondering if he had any altern alternative motives. It is yet to be seen if he is sneaky in a bad way or just a sneaky guy with no bad intentions. Uh, regardless, Sandstar doesn't believe he has any bad ill will and is actually quite happy due to the fact that one thing he managed to sneak his way into was the heart of Burdock Foot, who we'll be getting into very shortly. Uh, they are currently the only pair of mates in the clan, and as I said earlier, Sansar is silently hoping for kits. <laughs> um, Dust Cloud, Burdock Foot, and Yellowbush have a nice little friendship group going on. But yeah, what do you guys think about Dust Cloud? Is he a good guy? Is he planning something? What are your thoughts? Next up is finally Burdock Foot, a 64 moon old vengeful she cat who is very smart. And I know it says she's vengeful, but I'm taking that to mean she doesn't have any current enemies, so to say. And it's more along the lines of she will want to avenge deaths of her clanmates if they were wrongfully killed or something. Which is how I'll be treating most vengeful cats, probably. Um, she was the cat who actually received that warning about Squirrelpaw. It specifically being a warning of a tragedy awaits one of our youngest clanmates. And with the clan being so new, she didn't know what to do with that information and went a little crazy with stress for a bit. She received an apprentice and was worried he would be the victim. When Squirrelpaw died, she was angry but accepted after some time that she couldn't avenge a death over berries and there was nothing she could do to stop it. She has since stopped being so hard on herself with the help of a certain cat who I mentioned snuck their way into her heart and her new friend Yellowbush. I really like Burdock Foot, and I think she deserves some real happiness after all this stress. Hopefully her new friend group isn't planning anything nefarious. Uh, we shall see. Next up is a big jump age-wise. The 24 moon old Stoneleaf, who is ambitious and a fantastic hunter. He was a month away from being a warrior, which happens at 12 moons, by the way, in the game. Um, at the start of the clan... So I'm just going to say he didn't train for a month as an apprentice, and he was just a young warrior at the very start who got a little extra help from Burdock Foot, who was technically his mentor. He is eager to get his first apprentice and was a little disappointed that Squirrelpaw had become a medicine cat at the beginning, since she was almost his apprentice. He's a bit cocky and is happy not to be the youngest warrior now that the kids at the start have finally grown up. He tries to boss them around a bit, now that he feels he has the power to, but it doesn't usually work. <laughs> he has big dreams and looks up to Sandstar and Burdock Foot in particular. But yeah, that's Stoneleaf, which is a very funny name to me. He's kind of just a little cocky jerk right now. <laughs> Next up is Cinderpetal. He is 17 moons old, fierce and a fantastic hunter. He had been one of the kits at the very start of the clan. He was actually the apprentice of the deputy Whiskerheart. And after becoming a warrior, he didn't really want to talk to her anymore. The rumors and doubts about her abilities probably got to him, and he's a bit embarrassed to have been trained by her. He's also a little self-conscious of his size, since he is a smaller cat. 
Due to this combination of things, he is very eager to prove how strong he is and does things like constantly chasing off rogues and fighting foxes and anything he wants to do to prove himself. He never runs from a challenge. He's pretty scrappy and always ready to fight. He all also has a bit of a friendly rivalry going on with Stoneleaf. They're this type of friends that will call each other names playfully and egg each other on to do dumb things, but are also very competitive when it comes to accomplishments like hunting and winning battles and things. I kind of love these two idiots. <laughs> Next up is Ravenspot, who became a warrior at the same time as Cinderpetal. So he is also 17 moons old and fierce, which I find interesting that they're both fierce. Uh, he is a great teacher, which he might have picked up from his mentor, who was actually the leader, Sandstar, which Cinderpetal is very jealous of. Um, another thing Sh Cinderpetal is jealous of is Ravenspot's size, finding it unfair that he shot up like a weed since Cinderpetal was actually bigger than him when they were kids. Ravenspot finds this amusing. <laughs> Uh, despite being a one of the youngest warriors, Ravenspot is very confident and feels no pressure to prove himself beyond what is expected of him. He does his job making sure to provide and protect his clan, but he doesn't do anything reckless. While he is fierce, he understands his limits, such as knowing he can take care of a rogue, but understanding that something like a dog would be very dangerous and would probably kill him. Um, a lesson he learned seeing Sandstar fight against that dog to protect the clan. I really like him and his design and can't wait to see his future since he's so young right now. If he dies, I will cry. <laughs> but yeah, this is Ravenspot. I love him. And finally, here's our youngest and last cat, Aspen Lily, a 14-moon-old playful guy who is a great, good hunter. His mentor was Burdockfoot, who is pleasantly amused with him and very proud He's finally become a warrior and wasn't the cat in the omen because she was very worried he, he might have because he was one of the youngest cats along with Squirrelpaw. Being the youngest warrior doesn't really bug him and he's just happy to be here. He tends to hang out with Ravenspot a lot since Cinderpetal is a bit prickly and Stoneleaf is bossy. He was really lonely in the three months he was apprenticed by himself and is very happy to be able to be in the warrior's den now. Though some of the other cats in the warrior's den can get a bit annoyed because I gave him a tendency to shift in his sleep and try to cuddle because I thought that would be very cute. Burdockfoot and Ravenspot being some of the only ones that don't really mind if he snuggles with them. Aspen Lily being an all-black cat, uh, I gave him a poof of hair to try to add some personality. I'm doing my best to make these cats stand out even if they don't really have interesting markings. But yeah, there's Aspen Lily. I really love him. And that's the first year of playing Galaxy Clan in this game. Who was your favorite cat, by the way? If people like this, I wouldn't be opposed to making an update drawing the clan again after another year or so in-game. Though it probably would take a month at least due to other projects I'm doing. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I did my best to look at their statuses every moon and give them some distinct personalities. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, check out my Insta if you want to see more of my art. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.